All right, hey everybody, Dr. Hagmeyer here, and today I want to talk to you about something called gluteomorphins, casomorphins, and prodynorphins. Now, if you're not familiar with any of these terms, gluteomorphins and casomorphins, don't worry about it. By the time you're finished watching today's video, you're going to have a much, much better understanding of really what they are, how to get tested for them, and the ill effects that they have not only on the gastrointestinal system, but more specifically, the kinds of problems that they cause to the neurological system, okay? So over the last 12 months, I've seen quite a bit of patients re really just reaching out to us. And most of these patients were extremely desperate for help. Many of these individuals have suffered just with a gamut of neurological and psychiatric symptoms, things like depression, anxiety, mood disorders, panic attacks, balance disorders, ADD, ADHD, brain fog, autism, cerebellar, ataxia, neuropathy, and just the list goes on and on of just different neurological and psychiatric things. And sadly, many of these people were just completely written off by their doctors. They were told that there was nothing more that could be done. Many of these patients were just taking handfuls upon handfuls of medications each morning, hoping that something was going to happen. In almost every case uh, of, of these individual, individuals, not only do they suffer with a variety of gastrointestinal problems like leaky gut and H. pylori and SIBO, which are things that are never tested within the traditional uh, healthcare community, but they also suffer with something called non-celiac gluten sensitivity. Upward, I, what, I, what we found is upwards of 50 to 60% of these individuals did test for positive for gluteomorphins or some combination of gluteomorphins, prodynorphins, and or casomorphins. And this is the primary reason why I wanted to shoot this video. Most people probably have never even heard of these terms, uh, but have also never heard about them as being a contributing factor or perhaps even the sole cause of their neurological problems. And so hopefully I wanna create some awareness in today's video. I want you to think about this just for a second. When you're depressed, what does a typical doctor in the United States do for you, okay? And you probably answer, well, they're gonna prescribe antidepressants. If your child is diagnosed with ADD or ADHD, uh, what is the typical doctor in the United States gonna do for you? Again, your child's gonna be put on some sort of drug uh, like Adderall or Ritalin or you know, who knows some other kind of new medication that may have been just developed yesterday. When you experience dizziness and balance disorders, what does the traditional doctor do for you? Uh, perhaps you're told that you have an inner ear infections, labyrinthitis, and you're prescribed Dramamine or Meclizin, antihistamines and, and antibiotics. You can probably see where I'm going here. Band-Aid after Band-Aid after Band-Aid, okay? The problem here is that none of these medications get to the root cause, and many of them, when you look at the side effects, they are worse than the problem that you're trying to get relief from. So again, our diet, the foods we put into our mouth, the things that we do to our immune system, how we take care of our body will either cause sickness and disease or it's going to promote health. I want you to think about your health as a bank account. At the end of the day, ask yourself a very simple question. Was today a, a day of deposits or was today a day of withdrawals? Okay, if you're, if you're sick and you're bankrupt in this area of health, you know why. I can't help but wonder how many patients are out there suffering with depression and autism and balance disorders and dizziness and migraines that could be potentially helped if we were able to identify these problems like leaky gut, like toxic proteins, gluteomorphins and casomorphins in the blood, and then eliminate them from the diet and correct the damage that they've been doing for all these years. I can't imagine what those outcomes might be. But just for a moment, think about what it would be like if by changing some of the things in your diet, you never had to take a Tylenol again, uh, a Tylenol again for your, for your chronic headaches or migraines. Uh, you never had to take an antidepressant again for depression. You never experienced the dizziness and the balance problems again because eliminating these things, gluteomorphins and casomorphins in your diet held the key to better health. So gluteomorphins and casomorphins, what are they and uh, you know, what do they do? Well, first off, casomorphins are protein fragments. They're particles that are derived from the digestion of milk proteins called casein, hence the name casomorphins, okay? What makes them so pro problematic is that they have the ability to really create an opioid-like effect in the body on the nerve system and on the GI system, okay? Now the same holds true for prodynorphins and gluteomorphins. And this is why you might be experiencing brain fog and depression and anxiety, migraines, headaches, poor memory, focus, um, days later after eating these foods or if you remove them from your diet. The, the tough thing about delayed food sensitivities is that unlike uh, the kinds of, of um, immediate or what we call IgE-mediated uh, food allergies, they're not immediate. 
We could eat them today and a week from now or even two weeks from now, we can be suffering all of the consequences. And this makes them so difficult to kind of pinpoint where in our diet these, uh, pro these problems are coming from. So if you test positive for antibodies against gluteomorphin or prodynorphin, this indicates that you have a gluten and dairy issue, okay? That means that gluten and dairy is having a toxic drug-like effect on your brain. Now, a problem with opioids is that they disrupt the body's brain chemistry. And what they do is they attach to the receptor sites that are normally meant for other neurotransmitters, okay? So neurotransmitters are these chemical messengers that the brain uses, and you may have heard of these. These are things like dopamine, serotonin, GABA. And, and what they do is these neurotransmitters are really responsible for dictating our personality, our moods, our behavior, our mental stem, and how we look at life, and, and just how we go about life, okay? This opioid effect on neurotransmitter receptors explains why gluten and dairy have just a huge role in so many cases of ADD and ADHD. Um, autism, again, behavioral problems, depression, anxiety, and even things like schizophrenia. If you actually look up and Google gluten and schizophrenia or casomorphins and schizophrenia, you can actually read the research that's out there. Um, things like anorexia and even chronic migraines are even tied into these toxic, toxic proteins. So by their very nature, many of the grains that we eat just have a devastating effect on our health. They cause inflammation, that inflammation disrupts the body's immune system, and before you know it, that disrupted immune system is now causing perhaps either damage to the intestinal uh, tract, the, the lining of the intestinal tract, which now can lead to all sorts of different nutritional deficiencies, calcium, iron, uh, vitamin B12, B6, B1, B3, trace minerals like zinc and magnesium and, and lithium and boron and so much more, but they can also cause the same problems to occur in the brain. Um, you may have heard of something called a leaky gut. Well, there is actually something also called a leaky brain. Uh, and again, the same mechanism occurs. Um, again, this malabsorption or damage to the gut lining contributes to the, inflama the inflammatory changes that we see. And there's a huge, huge relationship between the brain-gut connection and how the immune system is tied into all of that. So in closing today's video, if you have a chronic health problem or perhaps you have a child at home that's autistic, then you probably have already observed how addicted you or your child can really be to wheat and dairy. And so if you're suffering with any of these chronic health problems that I mentioned in today's video and you wanna learn more about uh, my approach, how we work with patients, I want you to visit our website, drhagmeyer.com, call our office, if you visit my website, we have over 900 pages and, and hundreds of videos of information that will help open up your eyes and uh, to just a new look and, and a new way to approach your health. Instead of trying toxic medications as a first line of defense, you really need to support your body. Give your body the materials it needs so that it can heal naturally and, and, and obviously get to the root cause of the problem. Um, hopefully you can see that the connection uh, is not only between the brain and the gut, but also why it's important to sometimes just take a step back and really look at the bigger picture of really what's going on and how everything is affected. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope you learned a couple things. And if you did, please share it with your friends, your family members, anybody who might be struggling with a health problem. Uh, this could be a total game changer for them, this gluteomorphins and casomorphins. And so it can help them get their lives back and, and really um, you could be the person that's, that's part of setting that whole thing in motion. Um, if you haven't been to my website, drhymar.com, again, I encourage you to visit it. Again, there's 900 pages of information there dedicated towards helping people improve their health naturally. So again, take care, and I hope you enjoyed today's video.